Welcome back to What Artie Nibs with General Disturbance. This is an M12, it's the Tier 7 American SVG, and we're located on the east spawn of Airfield. And the commander of this vehicle is Atom Mine. Now, battle is about to commence. Okay, they're underway. Now the M12, the M12 is, they only built 100 of these, 60 in 1942 and another 40 were built in 1943. They used to know it as the uh, door knocker, that was its nickname. Um, and it was basically a 155mm gun which was designed by the French but mounted on the chassis of an M3 Lee. It's quite an effective arty, actually. Okay, Atom Lime's found his firing position. And he's just adjusting right up against the edge of the map. Okay, he's now looking for a target and he's found one. An M46 pattern and a Type 59. Now he's lining up the Type 59 for a shot. And it's right through the field of view. You can see the little red line extends from the Type 59 showing that he was on target. But it's moved away. So he's having to adjust. Okay. Now there's, there's the M46 pattern. He's moved away but not very far. And he's dialing in the aim on that tank. Just getting it lined up. And round out. Well, it landed nearby, 132 hit points, and that's good enough to start with. He's getting some st uh, stun assistance because uh, he stunned the, the M46 and the Batchat 12 times has put some rounds in, and it's just been taken out by the T70. Well, it was actually taken out by Scorpion G. I thought it was taken out by somebody else, but uh, no, Scorpion G got it. Oh, now he's got an E75 and an IS2 to fire at, and a T25. Well, it looks like he did damage to uh, two of them. He did damage to the E75 and the T25 too. Now, he's got a 26.52 second reload on this Sarty. And although it's a fairly long reload, it does do a fair amount of damage with each shot. The French design was actually quite accurate, although they actually used several designs of howitzer. Uh, or in fact, actually, I shouldn't say howitzer because it's not a howitzer. It's a gun. Now, that Type 4 Heavy just fired a round in. He's trying to line up a shot on the E-75, but unfortunately the rock there is directly in the way, so we can't get a solution. But he can fire at some of those other tanks. It's just he's focusing on the E-75 at the moment. Okay, he's adjusting his view now. I think he's going to go for one of those two. I think, it's yes, the M MT-44 would make a good choice. He can splash that. He's lining up the shot. And round out. Oh, he, he fired just as it pulled back. If it pulled forward, he would have gone right into him. But I think he's going to now try and hit that IS-2. No, nope, he's changed his mind, he's gone back to the lever. Well, he's two thirds of the way through his load cycle, so he's going to have to make up his mind soon on which one he's going to hit. I think it's going to be the lever. Round out. Well, it landed just next to the lever. Did 115 hit points of damage, but. I'm afraid that's all it did. And those enemy are getting rather close, so I think he's going to have to get out of there now before he's spotted. Now he's heading down to the south, and his team does actually tend to dominate the south at the moment. They've got uh, a fair number of tanks down there. I don't think he's going to be worried about knocking those bushes over. He might have a bit of difficulty firing those enemy tanks over that rock face. Because it is fairly close. Yeah, he's looking, he's aiming over that to the other side of the camp. But I think he's having a bit of difficulty. But he's going to go after this Waffen Trigger Alpha Panzer Fear. 
Dialing in the aim. Sorting it out, round out. Oh, and it pulled forward just at the right moment. 225 hit points, which is useful. But the E75 is now in the cap, and he's facing off against uh, an SDR V103. And he's also taking fire from some of his other teammates in the Scorpion. Dialing in on the E75 again. No, he can't get a shot. He's just too close to the rock face, so he can't loop the shell over that rock face into the E75. Because, because when it's closer, the trajectory has to be a bit lower to get the shot onto target. And of course, the rock face gets in the way. Right, he's going to have another go at the Waffentrager Alpha Panzer And there's a T28 prototype there as well. And his team has got that Rebel Arise there. And the Rebel Arise has already got four kills. But I think he saw that GW Panther. And he was looking to get a shot into that, but he couldn't. So he's going to go after the Waffentrager again. Round out. Oh, well, he stunned him, but he didn't get a hit because it was just too far behind the Waffentrager. But that might help the Rebel Arise to finish him off. And there's the enemy GW. And the Striver's actually taken out the E-75. That means there's still the Lurva to deal with. And the GW just fired... And Atom Line fires around in on the um, on the GW, picks up 228 hit points of splash, but they lost the Ravelarise. Now we have still got that GW Panther and the T28 prototype, and the T28 is 100% health. That's a dangerous tank destroyer. Oh, he lost the T25 and he fires around him, but it's a little too late. All it does is stun the T28. Right, so we've got the Striv. And the M12. Versus the T28 prototype and the GW Panther. Now the thing is that the GW Panther is a bit of a novice. Hasn't got any kills. But the T28 has got five kills already. So he is an experienced player, there's absolutely no doubt about that. Right, now this is going to be difficult. Where does Atom Line go? Well, he's gone up on the rise because that would give him better eyes on the target. But we can see the T28 is just the other side of Temple Mount. And because Atom Line's got a red line, yeah, the rock actually, that round actually stunned his own teammate. He hit the rock face trying to get at the uh, T28 and unfortunately his own gun, his own teammate took the, uh, the the stun. Okay, he's moving. Relocating. Oh, the Striver's taken some hits. I think those hits are from the enemy arty as well. Looks like he was stunned a second time. Right, well that means that there's that T28 prototype around that other side of Temple Mount. And Atom Line is taking a big risk. And the rest of his, his team actually think they've lost this battle. In fact, the Batchat 12 tons says, is, oh, we know it's lost from the start. In fact, the Reveler Rise is suggesting that the Arty should go to the water. Well, I think he's thinking maybe the RT will suicide. Well, that's not going to happen. Atom Line is going to fight. Okay, well, he's managed to get this far without being spotted. That's amazing. That suggests to me that the T-28 prototype has gone to his cap. And the rest of his team, the Rebel Arise, is suggesting where they think the enemy is located. Well, he's not being very helpful. Well... Atom Line's going the direct route to the cap. It's a bit of a risk, because he might be spotted by the T-28 if he's still hanging around, but it's probably the easiest thing for him to do, to go directly into the cap. Or is he? Well, no, it seems to. He's going around the cap. He's not going to go in. He's going to have a look for the enemy first. Now, 
Well, the M12 doesn't have a great view range, so there is a bit of a risky thing to do. It's only got a view range of 270 meters. Even the GW has got a better view range than that, so it is a very risky thing for him to do, to do this. Well, nothing yet. That makes me suspect that they are definitely at the other end of the map. No, still nothing. But seeing as his view range is so small, he's not going to see very far anyway. Well, it was worth a look. If the enemy starts capping, we'll know where they are. In fact, if the enemy starts capping, Atom Line can start capping. He can also try to reset their cap by firing into the cap. Well, Atom Line's having another look down at the south end of the west side of the map. I don't think you'll find anything over here. Ah, the enemy started capping. Okay, we know where they are. We know where one of them is. And my suspicion is that that's the T-28. Okay, now he's going to try firing into the enemy cap, or into his own cap, to try and get a reset. Oh! The enemy's pulled out of the cap! Now he's fired a round in near the exit to that cap. I think he su suspects that the enemy left and is headed this way. But both of the enemy vehicles are fairly slow moving. Or at least the uh, T-28 prototype is. And uh, it looks to me like Atom Line is setting up a, a firing position so that he can ambush the enemy when he gets back to the cab. But it's a very narrow ambush. Right, okay, it's going to try and knock that building down. Yeah, that, that will open it up a bit better so that he can then fire at anybody who comes up the front door. He's got 39 seconds to go to complete the cap. I think that was a round from the uh, GW just there. Just damaged the building the other side. I suspect when that building went down, the GW thought that he'd gone the other side. Okay, he's pulling back just slightly. He doesn't want to knock any more buildings down because that would give away his position. 11 seconds, 10 seconds, 9, 8, that was a round from the enemy RT, just landed next door to him, 4 seconds, 3 seconds, 2, 1, he's won, he's done it, he's capped out, and the enemy failed, and so even though his team gave up, he didn't, and he won the battle for them, let's have a look at the end of battle stats, and it's a second class tanker for Atom Line in the M12. He also picked up a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits, crew incapacitations or module damage. Ah, oh, but best of all, he got a confederate. He didn't kill any of the enemy, but he hit a lot of them. And that means that uh, he hit at least uh, six tanks that were subsequently destroyed by other members and hit more tanks than anyone else on his team. But this is the amazing thing. He picked up the Raider Invader combination. He was never detected throughout the entire battle. No one ever saw him on the enemy team. So they, they never had any idea where he was until he started capping at the end. But they couldn't see him. 
But because he capped out and got at least 80 cap points in the process, he picked up an Invader medal as well. And that's a fantastic combination to have, I know, because I've had them myself. And it's a great thrill to actually get it never been seen by the enemy. So let's have a look at the team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage. He got third with 1,303 hit points. And he didn't get any kills, which puts him mid-table. Um, but when it came to base XP, he was third again with 802 experience points. He fired 10 rounds. He got 11 splash damages. He did damage of 1,303 hit points, all at more than 300 meters. He hit 8 of the enemy, but didn't get any kills. But he did get stun assistance of 895 hit points off 11 stuns. And of course, the important ones, he picked up 100 capture points. On a standard account, he earned 22,606 credits, but he cut a personal missions payout of 10,000 credits, and after ammunition resupply, he still had 21,406 credits. He received 802 base XP, but it was times two for the first victory of the day, and he got a personal missions payout of 401 experience points there, so his grand total comes to 2,005 experience points. But I think actually he has the satisfaction of getting that Raider Invader, and it is a rather special combination. So congratulations, Atom Line. That was a really good display of how you can actually do a Raider Invader. If you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel, and hopefully it'll be your replay that we'll be featuring in our next video.